All right, welcome all. Uh, this is the Tuesday, April 20th, 2021, Town of Monroe Planning Board regular meeting. Uh, welcome. Uh, so normally we do roll call. <laughs> so I guess I'll do it. Pat Shea. Here. John Allegro. Here. Lisa McQuaid. Here. Anthony Vaccaro. Here. Bonnie Franson, I'm present. Jeff Vanson. Here. And Jason Sarinsky. Here. And with that, we have a quorum and we can conduct uh, uh, our meeting. Uh, point out fire exits, uh, one behind everybody to the left, another to my right, and then we have an exit out this door, and we have another one through the main door that you at. Could we all please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? So first item on the agenda is Verizon. And everyone just remember to please speak into the mic uh, because we use them for our minutes. And just state your name for the <coughs> record, Scott. Sure, good evening, Scott Olson uh, with the law firm Young Summer in Albany, New York. So I believe we're here. Uh, <laughs> you were on our last agenda. We were going to resolve. I have to pull this down. We were going to resolve uh, a few items, which included uh, communication with the ZBA chair as to whether the straps would be acceptable, and we were going to follow up with regard to the fence and its design. Correct. So if you could touch upon first um, any communications about the fence. Sure, absolutely. Um, I personally have not had the conversations with the condo board, but Sarah Coleman, who is here behind me back there, she has, and um, we went back and forth with several emails explaining what the board was proposing, and late this afternoon we ended up getting an email saying that yeah, the condo board is finds it acceptable for what the planning board is proposing, which is the three-sided, black vinyl chain link fence with black slats, including the gate and everything. So Correct. They, they were okay with that. Right. Then the second item had to do with the straps and perhaps Sean, you could recount your discussion with sure. Mike. Sure. So Mike Murphy, the ZBA chairman called me this afternoon. Um, we kind of went over the method of strapping. He said he, the ZBA, in his opinion, didn't necessarily require a certain strap over another so he had no objection to the uh, strapping method uh, he just wanted to make sure that the screening was in place for the ground mounted equipment which i ensured him that the pl the board was requiring that on all three sides uh, and the that the antenna equipment would be painted to match the tank so that it would blend in which um, you know is a is a requirement on as a note on the plans and the applicant did address in the latest round of plans that the minimum five years has been added to that note so. Okay. so i know that was particularly so i also had i think after you spoke um to mike i had an opportunity to call him he basically said the same thing to me as far as the straps really their biggest concern was that it matched the tank right um and I did also tell him, you know, what the proposal was for uh, the fencing, and he said that that aligned with what the ZBA um, ex kind of anticipated. Right. So I think with that, I believe all items have been addressed. But I want to first, um, you know, major items. Sean, are there any more comments? Or Ashley, are there any more comments? Yeah, I, I had uh, reviewed the, the latest plans. I have a few outstanding items. Um, one, the, the lights, they did update the plans to show where the light is gonna be proposed. It's just one light on a timer. It's noted as such on the detail. Um, the approval resolution does require that the color temperature be less than 2,700 Kelvin. They've proposed 4,000, so that'll have to be adju um, adjusted. And just, I'm sorry to interrupt. And sure. I sat here two weeks ago and said it's not a problem because the people that did the plans said it wasn't going to be a problem. <laughs> I have no idea. Probably just an 
oversight, but it will be adjusted. Great, thank you. I apologize. And then Ashley's included a comment that any equipment updates, or I'm sorry, a condition in the uh, resolution that um, any uh, updates to the equipment will require site plan amendment as long as it's not replacing kind, so. And I think we had talked about that at the last. Ashley, anything? Just one other comment. I did speak with um, Scott about the easement because the easement they had submitted, I had some questions. When I went back, when I had originally read it, I read it to say that the easement wasn't going to be filed, but that's not the case. So it is actually going to be filed. So um, I'm okay with the easement in the form as it is. I told Scott that if Orange County doesn't accept it because it doesn't have a meets and bounds, then I'll have to work something else out um, and we'll have to deal with it at that point. But for now, he could proceed with that, that easement. Good. All right, so I think we mostly reviewed uh, the resolution at the last meeting, uh, but I'll scroll through it, see if there are any edits, um, and then we should be able to act upon it. So we discussed the nature of the application, um, private road. This is the latest version. This is the last one I had gotten, right? So there was a red line here. That from today? Yes. Yes. So oh. that was a red line that was added at the last meeting. Okay. So I just kept all of the red lines. That way it would be easy to, to go through it as you see what changed. Okay, perfect. She, um, so Noreen isn't at a microphone. So Noreen is asking me whether we want a copy of the plan set. Is that one plan set? Um, so is there, you mean, is it a plan set, one for everyone? Yeah, I'm, I guess just hand it out. I, b I believe that's what was emailed uh, and, and Sean has reviewed. Okay. Yeah, there's, we haven't done anything new since Sean's review. So we'll just make sure that it reflects whatever that the resolution reflects whatever the latest date is on that. And frankly, it'll get revised again <laughs> to, to address comments. All right, so as we go through this, if anyone wants, one wants to peruse the plans, they can. Um, but you did have the electronic copies. Property involved, we already discussed it was a bar lane. Zoning district in the LI zoning district of the town of Monroe. Plans. Uh, the resolution recites the various submissions that were made by the applicant. And you can see here that this is updated to reflect the dates on the plans that we just received, um, which are dated 4 13, 2021 history, the date of the application. I think we confirmed that date at the last meeting. Public hearing, variances. Um, we note the variances that was granted by the Zoning Board of Appeals. Type of action, it was uncoordinated. We did a neg deck. GML, it was not required to be referred to Orange County Planning Department. Uh, then we recite the findings. Public improvements, none are necessary. Then there's a resolution of approval. Here are the specific conditions we did go over. Um, and we've updated specific conditions to reference uh, Magoe Hauser and Edsel's uh, latest comment letter that will need to be um, addressed to the engineer's satisfaction before the plans can be signed. All conditions. So here's the condition with regard to the easement. Prior to the signing of the plans, the applicant shall obtain an easement from the village of Harriman for access over the project site to the wireless communications facility. The easement shall be in a form acceptable to the planning board attorney and proof of filing. The easement with the Orange County Clerk's Office shall be provided to the building department prior to any construction. To any activities taking place. Numbered, 
prior to the termination of 10-year term of the applicant's easement or any extended term thereof, applicant shall submit proof that such easement has been extended or applied to the planning board for alternative access to the project site. And should the applicant fail at any time to extend the term of the easement and fail to obtain an approval from the planning board of alternative access, this approval shall expire and the applicant shall be required to decommission the site in accordance with specific condition number 20 set forth below. That condition is because provided it's limited to a 10-year term, so this makes sure that they will, um, they need to have the access beyond that term if they're going to continue it, so they'll have to come back if they're not okay. extending that. Okay. Uh, applicant is obligated to keep this contact information up to date and shall notify the building department of any changes promptly throughout the life of the wireless communication facility use. Uh, here we have the antennas shall be anchored to the exterior perimeter. And we did confirm with the ZBA that it is okay um, to do that. So we will need to attach photo of example that board chooses. So that's going to be one that shows black vinyl fencing with black slats. I believe that was the first in the submission. Yes. Uh, number 16, applicants' maintenance of the wireless communications facility shall be limited to maintenance in kind. Any changes in antennas, configuration, equipment, et cetera, shall, review, shall require review and approval by the planning board. Site vegetation existing at the time of this approval shall not be disturbed by the applicant. And then we have our general conditions of the approval. That uh, we can make a motion, but I do want to offer, um, we have at least one representative here. Uh, you're representing Meadow Glen, ma'am? You are. Do you, you want to add anything or say anything since you're here? I'm on behalf of the Okay. I do believe that there are two people here okay. on behalf of Meadow Glen. Okay, do you want to offer anything or ex express anything or? Okay. So again, you know, the, the couple changes since the application was in front of the, the ZBA was that these um, antenna are going to be strapped to the water tank. But vice they, versa, actually. They're going to be anchored instead of strapped. Anchored instead of strapped. And they will be um, color, uh, painted the same color as the tank. And then there will be fencing of a height that will um, fully screen the mechanical equipment at the ground level on three sides. So I think, you know, just making you aware of that, that was what has been discussed. And we did discuss that with the Val village of Harriman as well because it's their property on which the equipment's being located. All right, anybody have any additional comments, questions of the applicant? Everybody's good? All right. So with that, um, would someone please uh, offer a motion to adopt the resolution as amended? Uh, Jason makes the motion. May I have a second? second? Jeff seconds. And Noreen, will you go through the... Jason Aye. 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 Anthony Caro. Aye. Aye. John Allegro. Aye. Aye. All right, with that, the motion carries. It is approved, subject to the conditions. And of course, once everything's in order, um, we will sign the plans. Great. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Have a good night. Have a good night. Thanks. So there's no action or recognition about the time, sh the, the shot clock doesn't matter because we've approved, correct? Yes, so the shot clock had been extended to April 26th, so you've We're good. complied with that. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good evening. You too. All right, the second item on the agenda is J squared, and I believe you're here, correct? Yep. Is Mr. Morgante going to appear? Okay. 
So if you just state your name for the record again. Uh, Paul Edwards, owner of uh, J Squared Builders, the applicant. Okay. So I believe what we received since the last submission um, is a tree plan. Yes, that was, I guess that was the one uh, contention, was the trees. And then or the applicant. What's that? Can you pull your microphone in? Just pull well, your, yeah, so that. Yeah. yeah, I believe that was the one contention was the tree plan. That was the only thing in question that we discussed last time. Okay. And then you guys had asked us to uh, look into a couple of things with respect to combining the driveways um, and other possible uh, trees that could, could be saved or how we could configure it. Right, so um, you could see the configuration here. So can you explain what we're seeing and is this okay. a change? Well, I'll, I'll give you a little bit of the history and what Mike did since the last meeting. Okay. What he did was based on your recommendation, you asked if the two driveways could be combined in the middle and thereby less disturbance on the property. Right. So he spoke to, I guess, um, Mr. Troiciano at the Department of Transportation, I guess, Orange County. Orange County DPW. Right. And um, he said, it's not that you couldn't do it, but he prefers separate driveways because he said, when you combine driveways and have a common driveway and a shared thing, uh, a lot of times in the future, it, it tends to add to property disputes. And there's no, um, they don't have like a jurisdiction on it with Orange County is what he was saying. So he prefers not to have that come up and then fall to Orange County based on their recommendation is kind of what he said. Yeah, that's interesting because I've actually heard the opposite. As we said, I guess, <laughs> I guess it gets into like maintenance things and stuff like that. And then you have a shared driveway. Yeah. It, so it could, you could have disputes with property owners is what Mr. Troy Channel told Mike Morano. Right. Mike uh, Morgante. But I think ultimately... Okay, well, that was, that was that, his that, opinion. That's one issue. Let, let me just move yeah, forward. Sure. We, we can circle back to that. Sure. Um, so in addition, in the middle of the location where you, where you guys had um, requested if we could combine the driveways and come through the middle, there is a uh, sewer manhole cover there. So another conversation uh, my engineer, Mike Morgante, had was with uh, Bill Sherry from um, uh, the sewer, Orange County Sewer District 1. And Bill said that the sewer... Um, sewer manhole in that location was actually a very important manhole because it wasn't just for access it was um, the sewer doesn't go like route 17m is to the left of what i'm looking at and the sewer stops at that manhole it's like an intersection and i guess it goes across it doesn't continue away from 17m going up harriman heights road further into the town of monroe's jurisdiction and he said therefore it was an important manhole and he would prefer not to have two driveways converging on that because it was something that they accessed frequently i guess or more frequently than a normal manhole was his position is, is that correct i know mike spoke to you about it too I did speak to mike that was more or less what he was okay. discussing okay uh, in my understanding though was that it was more that they had issues there not that at some point of something where they frequently accessed it is what Mike right, said. Right, exactly. To, to some degree. That's what Bill Sherry had told Mike. With that being said, uh, we went back to if we could separate the driveways and if we could have the least amount of disturbance to preserve the most amount of trees. And then Mike came up with uh, what he shows here on the latest version of the plan. Um, because another thing that I had brought up at the last meeting was the fact that it didn't really represent, the plan didn't represent the elevation of the, um, the berm, so to speak, at the roadway. Um, and we actually, I actually went out there and shot a grade with my excavator, and from the street level to the, the, the top of the berm in the middle of that area is like six and a half feet. So it, it, it would be almost impossible not to have a, a lot of disturbance in that area, and unfortunately that's where I know the scenic buffer zone is. Uh, because you have to cut down that grade um, in order to cut your driveways through and then also to run your um, to run the utilities through and again keeping in mind each lot is only about 80 feet wide you got a 25 foot wide driveway in each lot um, and then you have three utility trenches to go through each thing all going through the uh, the scenic buffer zone so what he did was because on the right side of what I'm looking at right now, there's a, uh, a right-of-way for the, um, uh, the telephone uh, box 
which is, is kind of a, a big thing over there. And obviously, we, we, we can't utilize that location. So he tried to leave the level of disturbance. I think he shows about 12 feet over from it. So we're not anywhere near that area, and it doesn't conflict with anything we're doing in terms of driveways or utilities. Um, and keeping in mind, that's going to be up about five and a half or six feet higher than what the driveway level is going to be. So you needed some area to slope down from the telephone box. So then he, with that in mind, he went to the other side, which is a site closer to 17M, uh, and he did almost the same. It's a little bit longer distance over there. Um, so you could have a uniform front of the property, so it would be, you know, aesthetically uh, pleasing and also the, the least amount of disturbance in what he could accomplish uh, with all of the factors figured in for the utility trenches and the, um, and the driveway cuts. And that's pretty much where we've landed with, with this now um, with respect to, um, you know, tree disturbance and stuff. Uh, another thing we didn't discuss last time, or Mike didn't take into, into account, both of us, was that some of the trees, because if you go up the screen a little further, uh, if you could scroll up towards the houses. Um, okay, so I guess 250, 264, 263, he had them shown on the plan, but it wasn't practical, right, those two weren't practical because if you look at how close it is to the house, it, it's, it's almost a near possibility to be able to preserve those trees. Um, when you're excavating a foundation um, and doing all the work, the associated work around the foundation. So he removed those two trees. And then he removed, because it's almost the same distance in the backside, uh, just above that, I think it's 330, uh, 330, 338, and 337. And one of those happens to be, uh, it was a dead ash tree anyway. And as Mr. Brower pointed out, um, there's a blight going on with ash trees. So it would be irresponsible for me as a builder to leave any ash trees that were in a, a distance of the house that could fall because it has to be assumed all the ash trees are going to fall because they're all dead or in the process of dying in the area. Um, so we, we made sure that we didn't have any ash trees within a close proximity of the house that could reach the house because they're all dying or in the process of dying. And that's, that's pretty much it. That's the only, um, that's pretty much sums up what, you know, so he's clearing an area of about 50 feet behind the house. Yeah, I would say about 50 feet. I mean, it's kind of what somebody would want as someone purchasing a new home to have somewhat of a backyard. Have a lawn area, yeah. Right. Yeah, and I think to some extent, as much as we want to preserve as many trees as possible, you know, in this particular application, it's about what's happening in the front. It's about the scenic buffer. So, right. Right. you know, the, more so than we expect some amount of clearing to happen for a homeowner to enjoy their property. And what Mike did do, though, is he, he added in trees in the front in the scenic buffer zone to try to replace what we were taking, taking down. Because, you know, it, it's almost impossible to, you know, route your utility trenches around existing trees, but you can, you know, replant trees in the front. So that's what he attempted to do uh, with, that, with the new trees shown in the front. That would be far enough away from the driveways and the utility trenches uh, in a spot that would, you know, look nice aesthetically. Which trees are you referring to? I, uh, he's got them in the front marked as the little number numbers, one through eight. Digits. I think one through ten, I believe. So he's got ten new trees in the front in the scenic buffer zone. Sprinkled in throughout the utility oh, trenches and the driveways. Guys. These. Right. Uh, all, all around. He put them. Yeah, I... I I think it's going to depend on the type and the size and eight, um, you know, we would have our, uh, our conservation commission review it. And anything around the, uh, the telephone box, we're, we're going to try to keep as many as we can because we're, not, we're going to try to stay far away from there anyway. So I think there was, there was other trees that weren't really listed because they were smaller but we were going to try to save them in those areas anyway, which I normally do when I build a house anyway. If something looks nice, uh, a maple tree or a cherry tree or something like that, uh, and it's in a location that doesn't interfere with the construction, uh, you know, we, I always try to save it as a builder. So I'm going to follow up with um, the DBW. Okay. Um, who was the person you spoke to at Orange I, County? Uh, Mike uh, Morgante did. He spoke to Mr. Troy Chano. And at DPW. And then who was the other person? Uh, Bill Sherry. Bill Sherry? From uh, Sewer District 1. Okay.
All right, so um, we did receive these plans more recently. Has anyone had an opportunity to look at it and have any reaction, Sean? Sure. So I, I did call Mr. Morganti this afternoon after we received this, um, just to kind of review why he had chosen this layout with the intent to see if we could somehow get the utilities a little bit closer to the driveway mm -hmm. to try to minimize the disturbance and try to maybe leave some of the trees in the center, um, you know, where the proposed lot line is, specifically maybe 222, 221, 214, 215. So, you know, some of the clustered in the center. Right. Just to try to keep some more of the buffer. Um, specifically, the electric, I think, could be done. The water and sewer, I guess, would de depend on the layout of the plumbing in the house, um, and we need to meet the 10-foot separation. Um, so I, I don't know if I'd necessarily recommend that the water and sewer go underneath the driveway, because that'll just add more expense to the homeowner if, the, you know, in the event that those fail or need to be repaired. The electric could is a different story, since that'll be in conduit. You could just pull new wire through it if, some, you know, God forbid something happened, but... So oh, it seems that's about 10 feet there that I'm showing. And right now, this is the sewer line and this is the water line. Right, just about. Right, about 10. So what's the difference or, or is a requirement that electric will be separated also from sewer and water or is it more uh, the sewer and water lines? Not to my knowledge, any required separation from the electric. You know, I'm sure you want to keep a few feet so that in the event you have to repair it, you're not damaging the electric. Uh, you know, that could be two, three, four feet, but the water and sewer are required to be separated by 10 feet. Uh, you got gas also. It's not okay. just gas over there. So there's four utility trenches. So we're not showing the gas. We're what? We're not showing gas. No, I guess because gas, they'll just kind of go where to avoid the other stuff. They'll get a mark out and they'll avoid the other stuff. Yeah, I th but I think in this instance, because we're dealing with a buffer, I wonder if we could find out a little in advance where it would likely go. If because would, after approving everything, if they go smack through the middle of the area that we say <laughs> existing trees to remain, it's going to be an issue. Um, you know, to me, I, I f okay, so why don't you continue on, Sean? I don't know if you have other comments. I, I, I didn't just... I kind of suggested to Mike that maybe we could push the utilities a little bit closer to the driveways to try to preserve some of the trees in the middle. So. Okay. Um, Ashley, do you have comments? I mean, just general comments about the tree plan itself. And it'd be helpful, again, to see where you have these tables to show which of those trees are going to be removed and which are going to stay. I don't think your overall calculations match with what you're showing. So it says, for example, you're only proposing one tree, which obviously that's not the case. So all the way on the right there, that's the, uh, the total oh, you're calculation. the table doesn't match the site plan. Yeah, saying. well, if you okay. could, in the table, add a third column saying whether it's going to be removed or it's going to remain. That way the board could see what type of tree, um, you know, each one proposed to be removed or proposed to remain is. And right. then also you have a tally of a total um, over there in the, the legend, the last item there. If that's meant to be a total of how many are going to stay, how many are going to remain, that the numbers there, I think, need to be revised. Um, and also to add what type and size of the trees that are going to be replaced are, or planted, rather. Um, the new plan will have to be referred to the Conservation Commission as well to get their input again. And so your code does require replacement of trees on a one-to-one -one basis or um, another basis that's acceptable to you as the board or the applicant can request to pay a fee in lieu of that replacement so again it's not we don't have a clear total here on how many are being taken out um, compared to how many are being removed it's obviously more so once you have that number you have to figure out whether you're going to require more to be replaced or or how you're going to address that So did you, you kind of, you understood the comment? I, yeah, I do. I mean, um, so, so basically with this chart, what it doesn't show, it's showing as X's here, but it'd be useful if right in that same chart, you had a column that said, you know, remove to remain, et cetera. And so then we could have our group go out and look at it again to see what's proposed to, 
to be removed and if, again, there's anything that can be preserved. But I think before that even happens, there just needs to still be a general discussion about the layout. Um, so planning board members, do you have comments about what's being shown? Question. Okay, um, Lisa? Actually just either replace the trees or pay a fee. So I was wondering if there's some type of ratio, like could you just pay a fee and not replace any trees? I mean, I, I, you know, and what would the fee be? I, you don't know if it's, I would prefer to have the trees and not have the fee, but I was just curious. Right. So it's in the code, it's um, a fee of $750 per tree, which is being removed and not replaced, and a fee of $350 per tree of six inches, DBH or more, that is being replaced on another site. So there's two options. Um, it's a one-to-one -one replacement, and it doesn't have to be all on the site. You could allow it to be elsewhere, but then there's a fee when you're going to replace them um, elsewhere. Possible and as far as how you get to that determination, that's really for the the board to Okay, to that's determine. good. Yeah, thank you. We get to decide. So, for example, on another site, it may be that there's really not an option to do a one-to-one -one replacement. So there may be an area in the town that it would be preferable to enhance it by putting trees in. So that's the fee would allow for that to happen. Anthony, did you have anything? I'm curious, the applicant knows the depth to rock in the buffer zone? The depth of what? To rock. The is, there, of is there any rock, bedrock? No, we haven't done any core drill examples or sonar right. or anything like that. I mean, I, I have a general sense. I've built a lot in the area. And you generally you see rock outcroppings and stuff like that when, when it's indicative of uh, rock or blasting or jackhammering. And I don't see any evidence of that in any existing houses around there either. So. I mean, maybe I'm just concerned about how that may impact planting. Right. I mean, that's always a concern as a builder. But again, there's, there's nothing that, that shows me that's indicative of, of that type of uh, soil, um, com you know, composition there. Another question I had was, um, are you, do you have to show driveway profiles on your plans? The driveway profile? Yeah. Yes, we can show them. Or at we, least we, in the in the in the first fifty feet. I, actually he may I'm sorry I don't have the the full set out with me, but he may have at least a portion of the driveway profile shown. So I'll look. I don't I know if it's what we've decided in the past in terms of showing trees on the plan, but I would prefer instead of having a dot of proposed trees to have drip, drip lines or you know, actual space that they would take up similar to what they show for existing trees to just give some proportionality to the plan. So we have on the prior plan, sewer profiles, um, water lines. Sheet five has the Sheet driveway five. profiles. All right. Trees. Is it before or after the trees? I'm at a scale. Is it before the water line? Oh, these are driveway profiles. Before the trees. Right. Okay. So that was for lot one and lot two, but that's for the for the earlier submission. I think before we even go there, we have to settle on the, the location of the driveway before additional engineering is done. Otherwise, you're you're kind of just doing a plan, a plan. Right. So. You know, to save time and effort. Do you know if the DPW is going to hold you to negative two percent pitch for the first fifty feet? I think that's required by Orange. Twenty County. feet. Yeah. They had that shown on profiles. Uh, is that it, Anthony? For now. Yes. Thank you. Jeff. Good. Jason. I'm going to defer my comments to the Conservation Commission. I'm not the real expert on trees. I know we should keep the ones in the front just to, you know, preserve some curb value and some privacy. But outside of what you want to do in the back, I think that's 
I'm deferring to the Conservation Commission for that. Right. Yeah. But, but again, you're talking about keeping existing trees in the front, and as I mentioned, I have to cut down the grade in the front about six feet in that whole front area because it's a berm. So I'm not sure, I mean, if I kept existing trees, they'd be on islands by themselves, I guess, sticking up six feet in the air. In, you know, in a practical sense of, of being able to preserve existing trees in the front. I'm not yeah, sure I'm, how we'd accomplish that. I'm not seeing that for both driveways, I guess. It looks like, to me, the one that's to the right. One, two, three. That doesn't look as, like where it's placed is as big a cut. The other one is different. I think there you do have, a, you could look at the topo lines. It looks like there, there's a bigger cut. And those are one foot contours. Right, but we're not, we're, okay, we're, right, we're talking about the, in, the, in the buffer zone over there. Like I said, when you're, when you're standing there, when you shoot a grade, I'm not sure, because I, I looked at the same thing. When I looked at it on the plan originally, I was like, oh, it doesn't seem like much. But then I went there and, and I mentioned it to Mike. I said, it's very tall over here. I said, the, the cut from the road, the street level, to the berm height is, is like six feet. So we shot a grade and it is like five and a half, six feet over there. And it's, it's actually, the reality is the part of the buffer that you're cutting is within the county right away. That's really where your cut is. Right. It's not on the site. Pretty Interior. Much, yeah. But then, you know. You're grading back. In, right. In, in, into, the, into the property. But then I think if that's the case, then there needs to be, you know, opportunity to significant. So here's going to be the issue. Because the more you disturb within the county right of way, I don't know to what extent they're going to allow you to install trees. Because it's within their right of way. I suspect they're oh. not going to want that. Okay. So, so once you grade it, you know, and, and, and do this kind of installation, then we're kind of stuck with that area not being treed. And so what we're going to be able to do, it will be the 50 feet on, on the lot. Mm -hmm. But if there were less disturbance to begin with within the county right away, then it just remains. You know, it's not like they're going to ask for clearing. Um, I'm still not... Um, I would like to discuss it with the DPW director about the shared driveways. Um, I have found, especially on county roads, that typically they actually prefer shared because it's fewer curb cuts going out onto their county road. So I'm surprised that that's what was expressed based on past experience. Um, the sewer manhole, I think that's a different story, you know. Um, I can imagine to some extent. I mean, there are driveways that come out by manholes, but I can understand why they would express that. Most manholes you see on the road, so they. Right, they I mean, we drive over it. manholes. That's right. So, <laughs> yeah. But the problem is, can they, you know, is, is the applicant responsible for, you know, changing the grade on the, or changing the riser height on the manhole in order to get those right. driveways in Well, that, that we wouldn't. Right. I don't know that that's reasonable right. to expect for if there was some changes there that suddenly they have they would have to change the height of a manhole. Right. That I don't. I think you have to work with that grade and right. then figure out how you go into the site. Right. And and the the county wants the two percent back pitch away from their oh, road. Well, so yeah. I believe almost like you're stuck with the the height of the manhole. Disputed location also. I think there's a utility pole uh, very close to there. Also, am I right? I, I can't really see from here. Well, I'm seeing a utility because where your electric lines are coming off. Right. I'm seeing one oh, right yeah. here. Oops. Okay. Ugh. I'm seeing one about here, right. well, and then I'm seeing another. Your electric is coming out here. Okay. Yeah. So I don't see any utility lines. I, I think the circle you're referring to is a proposed curb stop for the. Uh, Water line? You may be right. I, th I think I was confusing that. Yeah. Are you looking at this, perhaps? No, no, no I know that's the culvert pipe. Okay. Yeah. So I j and I mean this we clearly see here. Yep. I'll uh, right of that a little. If there's a curb stop proposed. Yeah, I was mistaken. A little that. circle. Yeah. Yep. Right there. Yep. Yeah, it's for the water line curb stop. Okay. Got it. So the W O and then the W you're talking about, and then another over here. So. Um, I would suggest we refer this back out, um, and I think we just need to review this um, and put it on our next agenda. Um, we did send this out, did we discuss Seeker at our prior meeting? 
Yes, you had assumed lead agency. Okay, so we took care of that. Um, we did get... So our conservation commission had gone out, walked the property so we could go through these notes. Again, although the, the grading and the proposed location has changed. So Monroe Conservation Commission walked the property. Uh, dominant feature of the site is that it's wooded. However, wooded lots are not all considered equal. Um, taken a complex forest reclamation project, condensed in two-step process. And I think this is a lot of what you spoke about at the last meeting, Wade. <laughs> Award. <laughs> Sorry. Stage. I'm tired. Stage one begins with the establishment of trees such as red maple and white ash. These tra trees are relatively fast growing, short lived. Transform the site from grasses to wooded plants. And then stage two begins with appearance of tree types like sugar maple, red ash, hickory. It's lower growth rate, but live longer. Found this site to begin be in the beginning of a transformation from stage one to stage two, but only in the front of the property. That is where the construction is expected to take place. MCC also noted that the proposed undeveloped rear portion of the site is mostly distressed and dying white ash. MCC believes that within a decade after the project has been developed, there will be very few, if any, of the trees that are now present. Therefore, it's recommended the planting of following native tree types as soon as possible in the rear portion of the lot. So American beech, shagbark, hickory, red oak, chestnut oak, sugar maple. So those would be planted, so I know you want a lawn area, you know, mm -hmm. so if we have to do replacement uh, trees, they can be beyond the lawn area. Okay. Thank you. Do you have a copy of this? Um, I would imagine Mike's been copied on it, right? This report? We, we can send it to him. Okay. We can yeah, make that's sure. That's fine. He's the point person. So... Um, is there anything else you want to offer? I mean, we, we have to look at the plans. So any other thoughts, any other comments? No, if, I mean, if, if I understand this report correctly, you're requesting that I take down trees that may die in the future to replace them with trees that are more hardy to the area? No, I think it was more an anticipation. It, it wasn't going to take plants, trees down at this time. It was more to plant the trees among the ones that are likely to die anyway. Wait, award. <laughs> uh, ward, can you come just so you can uh, talk into a mic? I raised a good point in that the trees that are in the back with the undisturbed area, those are highly stressed, probably will be out with it without doing any activity of man, they're gonna be history probably within a decade. Okay. So it's unfortunate, but that's the way it is in, in this area on a given. So, but unfortunately, again, we had two unfortunate events take place. The transformation to the more permanent and durable type trees were just starting to become established, but that's where all your activity is gonna be. It would be nice if we could consolidate the driveways that would, that would save some, but it looks very unlikely that we're, and when you get done, when you can do the grading, well, those, those trees are really either going to die or be stressed, not going to do much. So take advantage of our recommendation. We, we thought about this a lot. What can we best, what, what would nature do? That's what we're trying to say. That rear part of the property, those trees will be, are become, going to probably going to become, become a hazard because they'll be coming down with high wind and whatnot. So replace those with the more durable or second phase plantings as soon as possible. And then in the front part, you do your landscaping the best you can. And this way, you, you, it's a compromise. Like, you know, we're trying to do development with an area where it's challenging. That's all we can tell you. So, you know, if, I would appreciate if he, if he does, if the, uh, Mr. Briganti does revamp the engineering, and then, and then they could lay it out for us, and we could walk again before we make any rash decisions. And maybe we'll be able to save some, maybe not, I don't know. Right. I like to see the area of disturbance, then we can get some, right. some kind of uh, conclusion. Right, but you now, need to see the grading plan to be able to see what right. really can be or can't be. I know when I was walking with the guys, I said, <laughs> my experience is 
there's so much disturbance here, these trees don't have a chance. And it's a shame because they're, they're in their adolescent stage of development. It took them a long time to get to that stage. It took nature 50, 60, 70 years. As I said last time, when I rode the school bus up, longer than I care to remember, that was all, that was grass area. So this nature has been doing its work, but now we come in and we're disturbing it. So we do the best we can, that's all we can do. Okay, board. You're welcome. So I think what we'll do is we'll look at the plans. We're gonna reach out. Um, we'll be in communication with Mike mm -hmm. and we'll put you on for the next uh, uh, Thursday meeting in May. Take a look at this some more. We didn't do a site visit, did we? Does anybody want to do a site visit with Mike present? Would that be useful? Yeah? Curious to find out. So um, we often do site visits. Okay. And I think that being out there, I've been out there, but I think it's just good, useful to go back there and take a look, especially where the cut's proposed, look at the grade. Um, to get a feel for, again, how we can balance your needs mm -hmm. and also still adhere to what the zoning right. wants, I, which is I, to have a buffer. I would suggest everybody to take notice of all the other houses around there too, So, because obviously you try to fit into the, the characteristics of the existing houses in the neighborhood. And, yeah. You know, with that in mind also to what I'm doing. All right, thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, much. thanks. All right, so with that, I think those are all the items on our agenda, and we are down to minutes. And um, I'm gonna return the battery pack. <laughs> so Sean has it for his own computer. And hopefully mine will survive to the end of the minutes. Sean and Ashley, thank you. If you want to leave, you're welcome to. And I will, in the meantime, bring up the November minutes. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Good luck getting one. I don't know if they're going to let me in. <laughs> November 17th. It's this one. Here's our November 17th. Uh, the only person who cannot vote is. Um, Anthony, so we discussed rate drive. I feel like I read this one already. Does anybody have any proposed, I did read this, any proposed um, revisions? Now scroll. Pro Commons was on. Is Nininger with two N's? Or is it one N? N-I-N-I-N-G-E-R. Yeah, one N. Correct that.
So I would just say here, motion made. Okay. Yeah, I would take, I would strike that out. And the last one was Burke Dold. We could just say Chairman Franson. So we granted an extension. And then the last item was Smith Farm. And I remember the conversation very well. <laughs> December 15th extension, an adjournment. All right, so with those, does anybody have any other changes that they see? So um, would someone please make a motion to adopt the November 17th um, minutes, 2020 minutes um, as amended? So moved. Uh, Pat Shea may have a second. I'll second. Jason Swinski, um, Noreen. Anthony Rivera. Bain. Lisa McQuaid. Aye. Bonnie Franson. Aye. Jason Swinski. Aye. Jeff Hansen. Aye. John Weirberg. Aye. Pat Shea. Aye. Great, so those are approved. Uh, the next set, uh, and then when they're updated, please send them around to all of us, Noreen. Thanks. Okay, so the next set is January 19th. Oops. sent to us? April 12th. 12th? All right, let's skip that one for a moment. If someone has it readily, I don't know if you can email it to me. Great. All right, so we'll skip the February 11th, 2021. I know I reviewed this because I sent it around. Yep. So I think typically site distance is site, S-I-G-H-T. Okay, great. So who was present? Um, Jason and Pat were not. So one, two, three, four. So we're still good. Anybody have any other? Comments on these? I'd actually asked Ashley, and I don't know that I got a response, I don't recall, about whether we should say lost audio or just. Okay. We went over to Target, the storage trailers. Um, and then this was just, I had asked a question, why position this way, and then it didn't seem like there was a response. So to add whatever, 
Van Heist's response was? But it's under uh, target. And then Chairwoman Franson, right now the code allows temporary trailers. And then the next paragraph, options discussed about tractor trailers permanently at lo loading dock doors. Rendering of what these containers look like. How many docks does target have? And I'll just capitalize target wherever it appears. So, but it was my question, why position this way? That's what he said? Yes. Okay. Okay, so that'll be added. We talked about the hydrogeologist that we had retained for both DG Realty and Meadow Hills. And then we approved other minutes. So if no one has any other um, revisions, I'll make a motion that the planning board approve the February 11th, 2021 minutes as edited. May I have a second? Second. Anthony seconds. Noreen? Anthony McCarroll? Aye. Lisa McQuaid? Aye. Bonnie Franson? Aye. Jason Sorensky? Abstain. Aye. Aye. Thank you. And so then the next one is February 6th. No, I review also. So uh, we were all present. We went through Kestenbaum, uh, which is the place of worship, educational center, et cetera, up on Allison Drive. A lot of discussion about that, then Verizon Wireless. Oops. So, um, anybody have any revisions? Hearing none, I'll make a motion that we uh, adopt the February 16th, 2021 minutes uh, with the minor amendments. May I have a second? Uh, Lisa McQuaid seconds. Noreen? Anthony Perra? Aye. Lisa McQuaid? Aye. Bonnie Branson? Aye. Jason Sorensky? Aye. 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 All right. So the minutes are approved. And then the last one. Jeff, were you able to send that to me? Yeah. All right. So these are the January 19, 2021 minutes. Uh, I was absent. <laughs> and John and Pat. So, <laughs> so um, Jeff, you were the acting chair, so I'll scroll for you. You want me to take, take, take us through it? Take, take us through it. Yeah, so this was our um, reorg meeting for the year, so we went through our various appointments of the uh, acting chair, the planning board attorney, the planning board engineer, um, and we approved our meeting schedule and technical review schedule. Uh, we talked about the DG management project. Um, there was some discussion uh, quite a bit around the use of uh, duplex housing there, back and forth, uh, and I've reviewed all of that. And that seems uh, actually correct. Get into wireless, uh, Verizon Wireless on page three. Um, that was a fairly short discussion. Sorry. Um, 
at the bottom of that page, we get into the HPB, uh, HBP outside area. We were talking about the replacement of the trees. And uh, in that section, uh, noting the second, the second section, last sentence, Acting Chair Manson, and it says ECC, I believe that should be MCC. Reevaluate the, okay. Um, so we talked about some trees, did a thing of minutes, and adjourned the meeting. All right. So uh, I'll make a motion to uh, accept the minutes for January 19th, 2021, if we can have a second. I'll second. Thank you. Noreen? Aye. Aye. Bonnie Abstain. Jason Aye. Jeff Aye. John Allegro. Abstain. Abstain. Thank you. Not the motion passes, the minutes are approved. And finally, I think that was it, right? Uh, does anybody want to bring anything up or discuss anything before we adjourn? Anything? If we meet out at the site, could we do that during a weeknight? No. Yeah. So, Noreen, perhaps you can get in touch with Mike Morgante. Um, let him know that we'd like to meet and uh, what's good for him so we can figure out a time that might work for us. Uh, after 4.30 would be awesome for me. But, but days in particular don't matter? Monday through Thursday. That would be preferable, but, okay. you know, certainly. Uh, for me, it's just, and actually the last, typically the last week of the month is a little easier for me because I have fewer meetings at night. Although if it's at 4.30, I can probably do a site visit and then head off to where I need to go. And sometimes it's a Zoom meeting, so it's, I can do it at home if I had to. Um, but I don't know if he could do something as soon as next week, since it's the last week of the month. Okay. All right. Great. All right. With that, may I have a motion uh, to adjourn the meeting? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so moved. Thank you. May I have a second? Seconded. Thank you. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any uh, nays, any abstentions? Motion carries. We are adjourned.